hello welcome back to my channel i'm your girl sincerely kso if it is your first time to my channel welcome if you're a returning subscriber welcome back my darlings thank you so much for coming back to me i appreciate you before we get into the filming action for the day please subscribe to my channel click the notification bell and remember that if you have any request at all consider becoming a patron to this channel depending on the tier that you choose you get to make one film reaction request every month. So the highest tier gets to make one film reaction request monthly, and the other beautiful tiers get to participate in the polls that we also have monthly. So either way, it's a win-win for you. The way it works is that everyone posts what they would like me to watch or react to. The one with the highest amount of likes will be done the following month. So everyone gets to put it up, everyone gets to see it, and everyone gets to vote. And you can vote for your own movie suggestion as well. So it's a great way, more like a democracy. No one's getting any favoritism. It's the team and the group of patrons that get to pick what they want to see next. If you are unable to become a patron, I appreciate you nonetheless. Please subscribe. If you subscribe to this channel, you're a darling. If you subscribe to my music channel, you're a honey. If you subscribe to both, you're the best. So thank you so much for your support. And I look forward to seeing you guys over there. So um, for today, this was requested. I have never, 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 never watched this before. And um, it was requested by Gummy, Dark Side of the Ring, Season 1, Episode 4 season one episode four dark side of the ring and season two episode one and two dark side of the ring yeah I, that's what i see now in the email that you sent me and that's what i have before me so we're going to do season one episode four first i hope we all enjoy um i'm not a wrestling fanatic but i do love documentaries about real people and what they've achieved accomplished or failed at regardless but i remember watching wrestling the wwf i don't know if that that's why we, well we watched it but i watched it in nigeria and there was a guy who was always in yellow right hulk hogan i don't know if you guys know hulk hogan he had the mustache and he always had it and he was always ripping out his shirt i loved him and there was another one donkey at junkyard dog like that one was also and there was one that scared me okay now you <laughs> People are going to be like, well, you said you're not a wrestling fanatic. No, I was. I'm not. But I know these things. I watch them, right? Listen, let me tell you. And there was another one who always had this graveyard thing. Persona. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, um, at least, you see, I do have multiple interests. And I, I, I do know stuff. Okay. okay. So, please subscribe to my channel. And I hope you enjoy. I hope I enjoy this as well. Play. funny outfit as a cautionary tale. The Von Erich family ascended to wrestling superstardom journey. Dark side of the ring. Well, I was an older brother, and so it was a lot of fighting. I, I could overdo that power of being a big brother, but these are some hunting pictures. We, were, we always hunted with our dad. These when we were real young. He was the best of all time, but he was a vicious wrestler. Uh, my father, you know, wanted something different. He was a huge star in the 50s and 60s all over the country. So Fritz had gotten the reputation as the toughest guy in Texas. Our dad being the bad guy, and we didn't see it that way. So watching wrestling to us was torment. Oh, is only he can. The claws are holding it that my dad invented. Fritz von Erich was actually wanting to get out of wrestling and raise his family. He's the promoter with world-class championship wrestling, but he was also a very strong business person. I don't know that even if he realized how big a star as they were going to be. What an upper hand we had on other teams. Because you know exactly what they're thinking. New looking program. They were household names. Everybody knew who they were. Sporting event. They would have the cameraman and they would have the sound the guy, like, actually in the ring. Why about us, you know, and, and of course you got to keep going, and so pretty soon your shoulders are just... Oh, what? <laughs> what? One kiss step on the lip. He's like, well... <laughs> Ring when you go home from that shrill scream. That was what we shot for. We wanted that feeling, that intensity to stay that way until it was over. Carrie was the star. Carrie had the movie star looks, had the physique. He had Carrie. great personality, just charisma. Oh. David was the best performer in the ring all around. David. Psychology, movement. What? Kevin, I think, was the athlete. Oh, he was just insane. The then Mike. Mike didn't have the size as the other brothers. He was real close with his little brother. 
The Von Erichs epitomized God, family, and country, their hero. Clean cut guys, but I think people realize we were human. But you could. There's something about those boys, every one of them, that everyone loves them, and I love them. So Aww. She said, I love them. And they had watched these kids grow up. They were busy on the road, because you got to realize it's a 360. My goodness, day. that one just looks like. So Sylvester, who does he look like? He looks like the talks were already this out actor. there. That David could be one of the uh, top. The table, and I said, Dave, uh, I just had that really bad feeling. I said, they're looking at him, and uh, here is after my first knee surgery. On my third knee surgery, they lived in a trailer park because since they were always on the road, they had a house trailer that they could move from place to place. I think he was six years old, and somehow it electrocuted him. And he fell in the snow face first and drowned. Came in and saw my dad punch a car window and just shattered. He came out of that. When it came to David Von Erich, the, the, you know, getting the news that he passed away, this voice says, David Von Erich dead. It's 2.30 in the morning and I'm trying to decide how do I get this news. Back then there weren't cell phones. And I got out of the car and I walked to the door and he opened the door to the motor coach and he looked at me and he said, which one? David's dead. Hmm. Strong, good man, but when he was telling me, he was like, it was a big freaking deal in that part of the country. It was almost like the fans had lost a son. What? There was a lot of wrestlers right here in this area. When they went to the funeral, the tears flowed. It was it was hard to take. And speakers outside for the thousands of people that were there. It came back acute enteritis. His intestines basically from an infection swole up to the. It was gastroenteritis, a terrible way to die. And we lost him all that afternoon. The brother of David Von Erich Carey was going to challenge Nature Boy Rick Flair. We had to switch that title. I think that's where uh, we saw Fritz had some clout. That title changed. Your referee is David Manning. Here I knew I was going to go down in the record book. And when, whenever that one, two, three, that was probably a bigger deal to the Von Erich boys than it was to Fritz himself and to the fans. Can you see, like, he's, this, this, this Carey brother looks, it, it's like he has Arnold Schwarzenegger with him. He has Sylvester Stallone. I can even feel. see John Fritz Travolta. Can you see this picture right David here with the three, we with the other two brothers? He pop. looks like John Travolta. Can you see it? Whenever I saw Lance, he was the perfect guy. I mean, he was chiseled. He looked like he could be a Von Erich. It really hurt their image, and it started the, the downward spiral going a little bit quicker. In, this, in, in every situation, not only in the ring, but in life. And, you know, that's, that's what we wanted to be like. Uh, gosh, they're so talented. And when I look at them, I see the brothers. They needed another Von Erich. Overall, it did a lot more damage than, than it did good. He felt it could get exposed and, and uh, that Mike would be able to step up and take the role. You know, he had the drive, he had the, he had the stamina, so it was hard for Mike. And he wasn't a great athlete. The only thing he had going for the him me. is that he was called Mike Von Erich. Gino pulled just when he wasn't ready and out it came. And... Mike dislocates his shoulder in the ring and is rushed to an Israeli hospital. They literally took him home and all of a sudden his temperature is sky high. Mike Von Erich hospitalized for routine shoulder surgery. He sustained a staph infection that S. Stop it. Stop it. What kind of curse is uh, this? The doctor comes out and he said his blood pressure has plummeted. His organs are starting to shut no. down. Stop it. We were in the room and Gary Holder, who was considered the chaplain of world class, was there in the room. He took the Bible and he slammed it down on the table. And he said, God, there is your word. So keep your word. I'm not sure what happened, but everything's functioning. His temperature has dropped. So let's see where we're at. Hospital. He might have rushed it a little bit. He was so anxious to get back. And so we did a big press conference. I know. Uh, yeah, be that cardboard show if they want to see me uh, back for uh, my very first time. I he looked really gaunt and uh, yes. hollow. I wonder Wasn't if it was he was You got to realize when Mike came on the scene, the, the brothers were superstars. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you had big shoes to fill. Yes, the pressure. Yes. Morning, Von Eric was arrested on suspicion of drunken driving and possession of marijuana. Oh. 
uh, had all the police looking, and um, it was, I want to say, two days, maybe three, before they found Mike. And reportedly was depressed about being arrested the night before, as his mother and brother looked on, and the family's worst fears were confirmed. Of suicide. The overdose. It's so sad. So you guys, um, could I take another break for just Of course, time? of course, my darling, of course, they are your brothers. And once again, another Von Erich brother is called upon to step into the ring. Oh my gosh, this is depressing. But continual misfortune chipped away at their image. Yes. And they would have one last desperate attempt to revive it. Oh, oh my gosh. How can much can one person But I taught them about family? eating. Mike was really something special. This is a gift from a fan. Right here, really old picture. We loved our fans, and, and oh, after Dave's death and Mike's death, you feel like you're letting everybody down. Emily, I think the first thing everybody wants to do is question, well, if they're such strong Christians, why is all this happening to them? But because they were so closely identified as not only being Christine. Texas All-Americans, but god fear in Texas all car wrecks or suicides or is there drugs involved in these things or whatever, and you can tell when you watch a television show, you're seeing more empty seats. You know, like, look, they were... Fritz's youngest son, Chris, steps into the ring attempting to pick up where his brothers left off. If he was going to wrestle, I wanted to have him a really good ground game. Know all the escapes and counters, have agility, explosive, balance, the snap, all these things that just didn't happen for him. And then all of a sudden, Chris broke his arm. Hey! Oh, my gosh. ...at the house and eat him. And Chris was just all upset and depressed and this and that. And... I'll give it to you in the morning. And I hear his four-wheeler drive around my house a couple of times and to there, you know, and he was sitting there by himself. I said, Chris, what are you doing up here by yourself like this? Oh, bud. I said, Chris, don't do anything crazy. Okay, he said, I won't, Kev, I promise. And I believed it. And I said, does Chris ever write suicide notes? And Dad said, uh, I think you better get up there. It happened. I saw him laying there on the ground, kind of choking. Uh, yeah. Put it, your head in his mouth. So he throws Once it. Once I realized that he shot himself in the head. He mm. what? Yeah. I thought he took pills. He shot himself. That's why he was fooling. You have. It's another chance in the spotlight. You know what? When Kerry takes the Von Erich legacy to wrestling's biggest stage. However, no one knew he was wrestling with an unthinkable secret. Which is what? What is the secret? Hey, my goodness gracious me. One family, all that. What is the mother going through? Has she... Oh, my God, my God. A lucrative offer made to carry by the WWF was an opportunity to revive the Von Erich name. Pause, pause, pause. Oh, this is so sad. Sometimes you think about these things, I need to pace myself because it's just one bad incident after the other. You know, some, you hear families and you're like, oh, that family is cursed. This thing is cursed. You know, people says that sometimes bad news, you know how they say misery loves company. You sometimes believe that bad news is also contagious. That when you come around a person who believes, oh, I'm going to fail, I'm going to fall, I'm going to falter, that those feelings can be contagious. You will begin to believe if you hang around that kind of person, you're, that depression too, will, I'm going to fail, I'm going to fall, I'm going to falter. It's, it's a trigger. It's a trigger. It's almost like something is moving in the atmosphere. What you hear, what you say to yourself. So having coming from a family where this person was unable to rise from their grief and overcome that sorrow, set off a trigger. One person fails, the other one finds it as an easy way out. You know, you've, you've, if you've noticed about this um, scientist about speaking to plants, talking positive to plants, and you grow, you flourish. That plant grows and flourishes, and another one you grow, you're going to fail, you're going to die, you're going to die soon. That plant begins to wither away. I know it's not that simplistic, but you know, being in that environment, the spirits, a lot of Christians also believe that, oh, there are certain spirits that if you if you open yourself up to it, it begins to 
like the Kennedys, how suicide was also like an issue with them and death just at certain ages. Oh my goodness, this is so sad, so sad. There's somewhere Stop I get the phone it. call, Carrie's been in an accident. It's not life threatening, Stop but he it. really busted up his leg. He said, holy cow, he said his ankle looks like an alligator chewed on it. When they made the decision to amputate, I would have never, ever amputate. thought. It. So they tried to hide the fact of his foot situation. He wanted me to promise to hide that. You know, the injury done on this leg. Yeah, what, what about it now? Before, night? it was, now my leg is back. It's coming on strong. Everyone was sworn to secrecy over about a five-year period. To do, to come back like that, and not only just compete, but to impress people. Instead, it was another thing he had to hide. And it was another thing that was probably weighing on him mentally as I now I'll never be. It was a new identity. No, it was a but chance a fake to leg. And, but he was Good doing so Bonnier, well. He had every Bonnier, reason to be knows. proud of himself. My goodness, please. His leg, his leg, his leg. Please, I can't watch. And he quickly drops the Von Eric name, tells him you can't do the claw. His name is the Texas Tornado. Not happy at all. Curry didn't handle the fame while you sitting oh, there. You know, he's no, old. I know you. Mr. T, Mr. T. I was trying to remember his name. You see, I know about wrestling. Curry was, was doing drugs. You just knew it. Once he went. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness me. Because of the drugs. He was on probation at the time, and then he got arrested again. It, you know, I was like, that's pretty scary when you hear people saying no, that. He told me he was gonna kill himself. I said, Kerry, are we sure as hell ain't gonna die? He said, I'll tell you what, Kerry, let's, uh, you and me, let's go to Alaska. On the morning of February the 17th, 1993, the same day Kerry was called dad and he said can't talk busy well he was pouring a driveway and i was gonna tell him carrie's in a bad way and he's gonna hit dad i love you Please. i really really love you carrie got in the jeep why didn't you hold him like he's told you to i was uh, wondering why carrie's been out in the field so long he said he hey. uh, went and looked in his pistol head down there and he saw the jeep parked with one glove laying on the seat so he knew then what was happening he had taken <laughs> Seems dead. Shot himself in the heart. Jesus. Brothers began to pile up. I used to have five brothers, and now I'm not even a brother. Over all of that, uh, Fritz and the last ten years of his life was not a picture of what I would call hell. You would have never thought yes, that he. Yes, it's too much. How did he? Dad, could you tell the story though of that day when Granddad pointed that gun at you? Well, he got that gun out and he pointed the gun at me and he said. You'd kill yourself, too, if you had the guts. And he pointed the gun at me. He said, you're afraid, aren't you? And I said, no, sir. I'd seen him suffer too much. What a good man he was. Way to serve better than that. What a good man. The immortal Fritz von Erich. What happened? This is too much. No, oh. I lost a brother. I lost oh. all of them. And there was talk about yes. there being a curse on the family, you know. And I was mad, and uh, and there was a time oh, I thought that, because I knew how much people hate guns. If I stole one, that's prison. I went to steal that gun, and that old man that owned the store was looking right at me, and I looked right into his eyes. He said, love you, Kev. And I came in back in that store, gave him his rifle, and hugged him. I said, I love you too, sir. Anyway, I'm so glad it's over. Save me. This is my desk, my office. That's good. Yeah, for anything in the world. The peace I've ever had before. All my life was to be peaceful. And here Look I am. Look at that. Is that his... Thank you, Lord. I've never been so he happy. He looks like his peaceful. dad. Kevin's son looks like him. Do you see that man to the right? Looks so... This one, yeah. He's been through so much chaos and stuff and so for him to end up in this and you see marshall and you see the athleticism of kevin and you see that big kevin officially retired on july the 17th 2017 where the von eric family name is celebrated to this day what is satisfying is dinner with the family 
children laughing. Is every documentary going to make me cry? Because listen, I don't even have the heart. I just, I don't know what would have gone wrong. I'm not a superstitious person. I'm a believer and I do believe in curses and I do believe in challenges. And sometimes it might not even be a curse. It might just be the hand that you've been dealt. And I just, I feel so bad. I feel so bad. But they suffered so, like they're killers and murderers and rapists and, you know, and they just get away with stuff. And these people were just enjoying their sport. They were loving their game. And this back to back to back, how many brothers? He said, I had so many, but and now I'm the only, only one. Thank God they had children, but you can imagine even what, what the emotional turmoil that it might have taken their own kids I, wow wow and i've heard of that claw thing i've heard of it i didn't know it was their father who did it fantastic healthy people healthy sportsmen like the my goodness why do why why does why does that happen so sad but i'm glad i watched it never never i'm so glad and i'm looking forward to the other seasons to know more about other Restless, the, truly the dark side of the ring. I would have thought maybe something by punching them or maybe fighting or something. Maybe they had some disorder with their head, but they were not boxers. You know how boxers then they, they lose their minds or something and they were not drug addicts. So do you think probably whatever steroids they might have taken that they thought was harmless had a side effect? Who knows? You know? On to the next.